Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on a 2017 Chevrolet Spark. So this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like installed. It actually has a hidden design and what this means is the cross tube is going to be tucked up behind the bumper here. So the only thing we're going to be seeing is the actual receiver tube opening. This does a couple things for us. Number one, it provides us with the best overall appearance here. It's definitely more of a factory-like appearance. And number two, because the receiver tube is tucked so closely to the bottom of the bumper, we're not going to have that much reduced ground clearance. So if we take a closer look at the actual receiver tube, number one, we're going to see this nice rounded collar on the outside. Now a lot of the other trailer hitches for the class one at least don't use this rounded collar, so I do like that Kurt does this. Number two, we're going to have a nice shiny black powder coated finish, which is going to do a great job of protecting our hitch from rust and corrosion, being that it's on the underside of the vehicle here. So adding a trailer hitch to your spark is an excellent option. It really makes your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can use our trailer hitch for a number of different things. Whether we want to tow a trailer, or we want to hit the trails with a bike rack, or just simply free up some space inside the vehicle, we could easily attach a cargo carrier. Now, say we do want to tow, we are going to be limited to 2,000 pounds for the gross trailer weight rating, which is the amount we can pull outward on our fully loaded trailer. We're also going to have a 200 pound tongue weight rating, which is the downward force on the receiver tube. Now, keep in mind, these are just ratings for the trailer hitch, which is actually tested separately of the vehicle. So you'll need to verify in your vehicle's owner's manual what the towing capacity is, assuming the vehicle can tow a trailer, and go by the lower of the two rated components. So we have a class one rating with a one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch receiver tube opening. This is gonna give us plenty of options to choose from for bike racks or cargo carriers. You do, however, need to make sure that the accessory is class one rated because that's what our hitch rating retains. So on the side of the receiver tube opening, we're going to have a half inch diameter hitch pin hole, which will accept a half inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Keep in mind, these are sold separately. We have locking options at e-trailer as well. I will say that most bike racks and cargo carriers, however, do come with their own hitch pin and clip, so you might not need one. Welded to the bottom of the receiver tube, we're going to have our safety chain loops, which believe it or not, will still work with these larger clevis style hooks, as well as these smaller S-type hooks. So now we have a couple measurements for you that are going to help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one I like to do on some of these lower ground clearance vehicles is the ground clearance to the bottom of the trailer hitch. That's going to be 10 and a half inches. The next thing I like to do is give you the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube. That's going to be about 12 and a quarter and that'll be useful when you're selecting your ball mount. That way you can get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. Finally, we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. That's going to be right at two inches, and that measurement there will be useful when you're selecting your folding accessory, so you can make sure that while they're in the stowed position, that they don't contact the bumper. So in regards to installation, this one's pretty simple, definitely something you guys can do at home by yourselves. You don't need a lot of mechanical knowledge, you don't really need a lot of specialized tools. A basic socket set will allow you to get this job done. Let's go ahead and show you how now. So to start our installation, we're going to come underneath our vehicle here. And in the center, we're going to have these two plastic push pin fasteners we need to remove. And then on the outside, we're going to have a couple screws, which we'll remove with an eight millimeter socket. So we're just prying the center out and then getting behind that last part, and pulling that out as well. So now we're going to come over here to the passenger side of the vehicle. We're going to have one bolt here we need to remove on the bottom of the frame. We'll use a 13 millimeter socket. So now we're going to come back a little bit to where we just removed that bolt from because we're going to have this hole here. So this is going to be directly behind the bumper where this flange is. We're going to have one on either side. This is going to be the access hole we'll use to insert our hardware. We actually need to enlarge that because we need to be able to fit both the spacer block and the carriage bolt up through there. 
So if you have a burr bit, that'll work, or if you have a step drill bit, that'll work as well. Even a file, really. Whatever we have to enlarge this hole is what we're gonna need to do. We're gonna be using a step drill bit here. So we'll take a little bit out at a time, and then we'll come back, test fit our spacer block. You can see now we don't have that much more to go. So we got our hole opened up here. We'll test fit our spacer block. That's good. And then our carriage bolt. So now that we know both of them will fit, we're gonna come back with a paint marker here. If you have a can of spray paint, that'll work as well. We just wanna cover all that bare metal that we just exposed. And then we'll just repeat the same process on the other side. So the next thing we're gonna be doing, we need to take a small section of the bumper fascia out to allow clearance of the receiver tube. Now you're gonna get a diagram in your instructions, but we're gonna use this tab here over on the driver's side, measure over three quarters of an inch, and then we can make our square cut out here. We use some masking tape, whatever you have nearby will work. Now we can just go ahead and cut this out now. There's a couple different tools you can use for this. You can use a pair of tin snips, a cutoff wheel if you have it, or we actually have, we carry these hot knives here at each trailer and make a pretty clean cut. We'll go ahead and show you this method now. So now we're gonna start over on the driver's side. We're gonna start feeding our hardware into the frame. These, to these two holes here are where we're gonna be inserting the hardware through first. So what we wanna do is we're gonna take one of our pull wires. I'll feed one of those ends through the hole and then I will guide it out our access hole. Then I will take one of the smaller spacer blocks and then our one and a quarter inch carriage bolt. So there's two different lengths. You need to make sure that we're using the smaller one for this step. Thread that on, pull it through. And then we can pull it into position. Once we get that one in, we're gonna have one more over on the driver's side, this one up here. And then we'll have one on the passenger side, the one directly behind our access hole. We will not be using this hole over on the passenger side. So now that we have all of our one and a quarter inch carriage bolts in place, we're gonna have two one and a half inch ones. We're gonna be reverse fish wiring these through the access hole. So we'll go ahead, thread on our carriage bolt to the fish wire, place one of our spacer blocks over there. Then we'll just simply tuck that hardware up into the frame. And then we can pull it back down through like so. We'll need to do that on both sides. So now we're ready to place our trailer hitch up into position. If you have an extra set of hands, that'll certainly help, but you should be able to do it by yourself, especially if you're on the ground. So we wanna make sure that we thread, or that we stick all the ends of our pole wire through the correct holes in the flange of the hitch first. And on the passenger side, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky because we have to deal with that bracket that was attached to the frame earlier. So over here on the passenger side, we wanna take the M8 bolt in our kit here, along with the flat washer, and then split lock washer. We're actually gonna use this in the hole that we removed to secure the bracket earlier. So they'll sandwich between the hitch here. But it should thread into that factory weld nut. And now we can go ahead and snug down all of our hardware. So now we'll come back with our torque wrench here and our 19 millimeter socket and torque everything down. So then last but not least, 
Make sure we re-secure re the bottom side of the bumper fascia here using the two push pin fasteners and the two screws on either side. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver here on our 2017 Chevrolet Spark.